uh, over the December, January, February period. Uh, we've had flooding in the last two or three years on an unprecedented scale. The tornadoes that struck. So, uh, the climate, has it all gone nuts? And we talk of a host pipe ban and our rivers and reservoirs at all-time lows. It's a topic of conversation that we'll be getting into a little bit later on this morning right here on BBC WM this morning. Also, Crime Watch Week begins this week. The Crime Watch program is coming live from the West Midlands every morning this week. It's the Crime Watch Roadshow. Uh, they're going to be in Shirley in Solihull today. We'll be live from there after... 7 o'clock this morning, right here on BBC WM, and also this morning, talking about supermarkets. It does seem like every month or so, we see yet another one spring up somewhere in the West Midlands. And quite often the debate about how that impacts on the high street and local shopkeepers comes up as well as a result. Uh, well, one group of Wheelie Castle shop owners is afraid that they're going to be next. Supermarket chain Asda submitted a planning application to build a supermarket just a few minutes walk away from Wheelie's Castle Square shopping centre. Well, I reported to Tom Darby's been out to Wheelie Castle to find out how locals there feel about the plans. From where I'm standing in Wheelie Square, I'm literally surrounded in all directions by shops. Butchers, grocers, you name it, it's here. But I've been talking to the shop owners, and they're worried that it won't be here for much longer. I'm Craig Draper, I'm partner in uh, Castle Pets on Wheelie Castle Square. We're very worried, I mean, <coughs> each toy as it is, I mean, inflation, the vats, everything, and it will just take more and more business away, you know. We live, we live week to week. I think we just struggle and probably end up shutting, basically. I'm Mrs Joan Hendricks, and I run the Castle Cleaners on the square and have done for the last 35 years. It would be a ghost town, because we've got all the others on our doorstep, which are a buzz away. And a lot of people think, oh, I can't be bothered, you know, but, but that is a walk away. I really and honestly, I think it's wrong of them to come and put an ASDA right on that thing. It's just not fair. It's not fair to any of us. My name's Mark Holton. Uh, I'm in partnership with my brother, and we run Holton's, uh, Spudger's, and Greengrocer's. In my experience, it's happened to us before. We had a shop in Sally Oak, and a, a superstore opened right by us. When this first happened, we thought, great, more people come into the area, we'll get the, the, the people around us. It'll help us. It had the total opposite effects. People just went into the superstore, they grab everything under one roof, they're in the car and they've gone. Regardless of whether they're cheaper, more expensive, it's convenience. It's not surprising that the shop owners are opposed to a superstore, but what do the shoppers think? I think it's great, yeah. They need some competition around it. I only shop around there, but I, 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 don't, uh, I don't get to ask them. I'd like one round here, though. Why would you like one round here? Well, they'll have more to choose from, in there, and they're cheaper. But I'd still use the same shop right Yeah, there. but I'll close them down, won't no, they? they won't. No, they will No. If that one comes, these, half of these shops will be going. Which is a good idea. We need a nice big supermarket. It, it would make it a lot better because, I mean, other people are having to travel out, out of their way to go shopping. Shopping centre there is expensive and it's not really the biggest and doesn't really give you everything you need, does it? And would you still use yeah, these Yeah, I'd still yeah, use these shops. Either. But it would be nice to see something bigger. You don't get very many people come to Wheelie Castle and it would attract more people to come round and see what the area in it. Tom Darby uh, reporting from Wheelie Castle's Castle Square there over the weekend, getting the view of uh, others a bit later on in the programme this morning. We'll hear from community campaigners in Wheelie Castle as well, how they feel about the prospect. But it is quite often the case, isn't it, where actually people who like the shops want a supermarket like that, but then the local traders will say, well, bring it in and it will kill us off. Is there a balance you can strike between the two? Uh, we'll be hearing from more in the Wheelie Castle later this morning here on BBC WM. BBC WM, Eyewitness Travel. Monday morning, minutes to be there talking to uh, community campaigners, talking to residents, talking to shop owners and shopkeepers in Wheelie Castle Square. Did I say that joining me in the studio this morning is Chris Hillcox, and Chris is a community campaigner for the Castle Square shopkeeper. He's also brought his two-year-old boy Aiden in this morning, so uh, if you hear that in the background, that's... That's what's going on. Chris, thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us on. That's all right. I do appreciate you coming in this morning. I mean, we heard a lot of people in that report uh, who actually want the store to be opened, and some would argue they, they have a right to a supermarket, don't they? Absolutely. You know, I mean, they have a right to one uh, if that's what they want. But I, th I think there's a, you know, a wider question. It's not just, do you want a new Asda store? It's, you know, do you want a new Asda store? 
and do you still want to keep your community shopping centre? And, and really, you know, people uh, can't have the cake and eat it. You know, it's, you know, there's going to be a big impact on uh, Castle Square shopping centre if the ASDA comes along. And, you know, people need to think, you know, do I really need this ASDA? You know, what will happen to my local community shopping centre if it comes along? A lot of people we spoke to in the, in the area over the weekend said that they already do the majority of their shopping at a supermarket. So if they're already doing that, then surely it won't impact that much on traders, will it? Uh, but if you look at Castle Square and the kind of shops that are, are available there, you know, people can do the weekly shopping there. And, you know, the, the, this is a very marginal community shopping centre. They don't have to lose much of their trade for a lot of the businesses there to go under. What's your yeah, sense, though, from people? Do people actually care about it? I mean, we, we all like to talk about our local shops and supporting our local trade. The fact of the matter is, when it comes down to it, people like a supermarket. It's quick, it's convenient, they go around, they get everything they want under one roof job done. And if you talk to people, that's actually what they really want, isn't it? Well, you know, Castle Square are, are, does offer a lot of that, but, you know, I mean, you're right, you know, people should have their choice and they should be allowed to have what they want, but, you know, again, there's, you know, a wider issue of, you know, what do they want their local shopping centre to do? And, you know, if they don't want their local shopping centre to provide the weekly shops, then, you know, are they happy for bargain booze places to come into replacement? Because people don't want uh, derelict shops there. Do they want uh, more betting shops there on Castle Square? You know, so there's... there's, there's uh, what these units might be replaced by, these shops would have closed and would concern Absolutely, you. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, people need to be aware that, you know, um, you know, there's a consequence for these decisions made. You know, if, if they want the Asda to go ahead and the Asda goes ahead, then there's a consequence for Castle Square. What would the... I don't mean, mind either what, what damage? Give me some idea. What damage would that do? Because I appreciate that, you know, that Castle Square is a very close community area. So what, what sort of damage would... Those shops closing do to the community in that area. Well, the, the damage may be that you know the shops become derelict, and if the shops you know are derelict and stay unoccupied, then that will really you know cause a decline in you know the, the, the quality of the environment around Castle Square. People may not want to go to a place that has these shops closed. You know, Castle Square al al already has issues with antisocial behaviour later on in the evening at, at times. And, you know, would that come into the daytime as well if, if the areas are derelict and people aren't wanting to go there? You know, there may be a, a spiralling effect. If, if a few shops go, that could mean that the other shops adjacent suffer and then a lot more close. And, you know, my worry is that, you know, if the large food shops close, then that cycle of decline starts. The, shoot, the food shops close, some of the adjacent services, because they're not getting the footfall from the larger shops close. But, you know, there, there, there's, you know there's, there's a wider issue here about, you know, not only Castle Square shops and what people want in Castle Square shopping uh, area, but, you know, that there's, there's an issue about the whole planning process going on here. You know, ASDA are coming at this with a lot of money, and, you know, quite rightly, and there are positive sides to ASDA, you know, they're able to put across their message. Obviously, the Castle Square shopkeepers, they have a different opinion, and with the existing planning process, they're not, they're not able to put across, you know, that opinion without, you know, community workers like me. Chris, appreciate you coming on this morning. Chris Hillcox, the uh, uh, community campaigner for Castle Square shop shopkeepers and the opinion of two-year-old Aidan also getting in there as well. He didn't well, sound very happy about it either, did he? So, uh, good to hear from him this morning. Can I just give a comment about borderline technology? Absolutely. Surely controversy is part of the game's appeal in okay. borderline technology. Yeah, well, uh, there's one point of view there. There'd be many people who'd say that with the millions there is being spent in football in the same way that the millions that are turned over in football, you would want to get the right result, wouldn't you, regardless? I'm just and, pretending and, and, the devil's advocate. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, 08453 Dad, Put your headphones on, Chris, because you've, you've, you've irked Daz Hale there. Eh? All I'm going to say is, Sorry. whatever you do, don't tell your little boy the football score, otherwise you'll start crying. <laughs>